The following program is a public access production. Comcast is required to provide time on this channel and make it available pursuant to franchise agreements with the communities we serve. Comcast is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of Comcast or its affiliates. Welcome to another edition of Discover Tinley, where we highlight the people and organizations in town that make Tinley Park a great place in which to live. And as we all know, Tinley Park is a pretty great place in which to live. Uh, my name is Ron Centani. I'll be your host tonight. And as usual, our program is brought to you through the, uh, the volunteer efforts of our Community Resources Commission, uh, along with our high school and college uh, volunteers who uh, man the cameras and the equipment and everything. Uh, without everybody around, it would be... Uh, not uh, able to put this program on, so thanks for all the volunteer effort to, to do the program. Uh, it's hard to believe that uh, the new year started now. Uh, hope you enjoyed your Christmas holidays and New Year's and had a good time. Uh, let's hope the winter uh, doesn't uh, bring on the heavy snows like we had last year. And uh, we enjoy a decent winter this time in Tinley Park. Uh, a lot of things going on in town. Kind of watch out for the TinleyPark.org uh, website, see what else is going on and uh, keep up on uh, happenings uh, with your local organizations. Uh, as usual, every year this time of year, we are very fortunate. We always have a traditional state of the village uh, discussion with our mayor. And as you all know, and if you watch our last month's program, you know uh, Mayor Ed stepped down this year and we have a new mayor. So uh, he is very graciously uh, approved is coming on and and giving us a state of the village address mayor dave seaman mayor thanks thank for coming and discover tinley thank you ron it's my pleasure to be here appreciate it yeah i the new year how's it how's it feel like being in the new position now <laughs> it's a little different it, it's it's i think probably like when i stepped on the board back in 1984 it's a little bit different than you thought it would be oh. and certainly being mayor is a little bit different than being a trustee yeah. There are a lot of things going on. Uh, there's uh, fortunately good things going on, and uh, I, I think it's really all positive. I think we've got a lot to look forward to in 2016, and we're really looking uh, looking to seeing some good things happen. Wow. Well, Tinley Park is always on the move, so I've uh, got to keep Tinley Park going. Absolutely. And keep it going with the board there and all like that. Uh, let's talk about some of the things going on. Now, last year, what were some things that, that went on at Tinley Park that were some major uh, improvements or accomplishments that you think we should uh, kind of review a little bit? Well, I think most of the things that happened last year as the economy began to recover were basically preparatory in nature, getting ready for the big things that are going to be coming. And clearly we've got a lot of that underway. You've got a lot of construction underway. Mm. If uh, you start at the east side of town, we've got places on the east side of Harlem at 163rd in Harlem, the University Medical Center, which is orthopedics, and we'll have uh, advanced MRI Ooh. and other capabilities there as well. We've got some other facilities going on further to the west. We've got ourselves a uh, uh, the Anthem Memory Care Center that is uh, actually it's further south on West or on Harlem at about 179th. Ooh. And and what's going in there now? That'll be Anthem Memory Care. Oh. And so okay. it'll be an Alzheimer's type unit. Oh. Then there's further west you've got a senior facility going out on the old Jones Farm on 80th Avenue. That's in progress. Mm -hmm. And where Ike Turner used to be there's a kidney dialysis center that's going in. So. Wow. A lot of health-related <laughs> yeah. items. Tinley Park should be the center of health care uh, in, in the south suburbs here, right? Perhaps, perhaps. Wow. That's not, not a bad thing. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of building going on, a lot of construction going on. So a lot of things adding to Tinley Park. And how. And that's already underway, so we yeah. look for all of those facilities to be open in 2016. Wow. How's the economic development going in Tinley? How's it going, and what's the projections for next year going on with with that. Well, I think we've got some interesting 
projects underway. Uh, economic development, of course, is always looked at in terms of how many new jobs are coming. And we have a number of employers in town, and you might not have known this, Ron, but we have 30,000 employees that come to Tinley Park every day 30, to work. 30,000? 30,000. So that's a big, big part. You know, we're not quite the bedroom community <laughs> that I think a lot of people think we are. We're actually a uh, we import jobs coming here. So it's a, it's a great thing to have that many people working here. And we've got our own share of light manufacturing and other things that um, you know, a lot of people thought had been offshored, but yeah. not all of it. And, uh, and I think a lot of it's starting to come back a little bit. So that's one of the areas that we have a big interest in and mm -hmm. tried to attract to town as well. Okay. Um, other projects that we have coming online are, of course, the mental health center redevelopment, which oh, yeah. is probably the biggest long-term development that we have. Uh, we've got a master plan that's been approved by the board, so that's going to be underway, and there'll actually be four meetings to talk about that with the public. So mm -hmm. we're going to try to get as much public engagement as possible on that and um, hopefully come up with a good good. Uh, community out there. And talk about what what the advantages are of the village going ahead with, with kind of taking this on a little bit. So there's been some conversation about should we do it, should we do it, what, what's the advantage to the village for doing this? Well I think the debate hasn't <clears throat> been so much whether the village be engaged in it because it's really at the heart of town. It, it's almost ground zero. Mm -hmm. And I think what we've got ourselves is an opportunity to re basically build our, a new community there so to speak. And so we've got a, a lot of excitement. The schools are excited about it. I, I was with the uh, school mm -hmm. district 230 people yesterday, and it was uh, it was interesting that I think they're excited and looking forward to it as well. Um, gives them a broader tax base, which of oh, course yeah. is always important because right now, having been in the mental health center, there's zero tax base. So everything that comes up out of there is additive. So we think that that'll be helpful. Um, there's some environmental challenges there, and yeah. the taxing bodies have agreed to participate in a tax increment financing district. So that'll give us a little bit more opportunity to put some economic incentives together to be able to get some of the demolition as well as the mitigation of the environmental hazards that are out there uh, funded in such a way that it'll still be a, an attractive uh, opportunity for the developers to take on. Wow, is there a timeline of some kind for what's gonna go on there? Well, we expect the <clears throat> master plan to be finished uh, early summer. Mm -hmm. And with that, um, we've invited, there are a several developers that have actually shown an interest in the site already. Oh, wow. And we'll make them part of those open meetings as well because we want their input. They're professionals. This is what they do for a living. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes their insights are important to be taken into consideration as well. Wow. Well, let's hope something really neat comes out. Do we, we don't want Wrigley Field South down here or the new stadium down here? Uh, well. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> there's There's been some talk about that okay. uh, by certain people. Uh, um, right now, that isn't how we envision it. No, I'm That just isn't kidding. to say, well, it is, I mean, I don't think you rule anything out if, if, okay, if, yeah. if the right proposal comes in and it, it has legs. I mean, I think it would be attractive. It's just that some of the uh, things that we're after is is basically a 24/7 community, not mm -hmm. something where the lights go on, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, a few months a year and then it's lights out. We'd really right. like to see a community there. We really need those people seeds as well to support the downtown Tinley. As much as we think that it's it, it's far away, it's it's a half mile away. No, oh, yeah. and so well, let, then, well, let's talk about uh, Oak Park Avenue. There's already a conversation about Oak Park Avenue. What's what's going on with that? Well, that's probably the most near-term uh, opportunity that we have. We expect about 187 mm -hmm. units to be built on what was called the South Street Project. Mm -hmm. And that is the area that is between the Citibank and Luby's on mm -hmm. South Street, right across the street from the uh, Oak Park Avenue train station. So that's pretty exciting, and we think that that will be um, uh, possibly going as early as spring. Oh, is there, because there's always, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and it I, isn't coming. So. I, I believe me, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm you. somewhat there as well when yes. I see the shovel in the ground, <laughs> I you. believe. But um, we actually have some conversations with the developers later this week, so I'm, I'm pretty excited that this is going to be something that comes to fruition this time around. 
Okay. How about the rest of Oak Park Avenue? What's well, we've got, of course, the Central Junior uh, site, the oh, former yeah. site of Central Junior High School. We expect uh, that and perhaps what was once upon a time known as North Street, the area mm -hmm. just on the um, other side of the train station uh, to be up for development as well. And if possible, we'll develop that as one large project because we think we'll be able to get enough variety there, which always gives the people that are developing it a little bit more opportunity because they can flex with the market. So for instance, if townhomes are in vogue, they can do townhomes. If apartments are in vogue, they can do apartments. If condos are in vogue, they can do condos. Okay. So it'd probably be a combination or at least two of those three. Um, but ultimately, our preference is, of course, to see them ultimately over time convert to condos. Oh, wow. Okay. How's our financial situation in town here? Are we still running in the black? and? We're doing How's well. Taxes situation here. We're doing well, and uh, in early December we would be uh, have just finished the levy process, and we'll be doing a no increase in the village tax levy, as mm -hmm. did the library. And as I conversed with the school district 230, they're not going to do a levy increase either. So oh, hopefully the residents of Tinley Park will get a break this year. We'll oh. <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed. So <laughs> the taxing process, of course, is is a bit of a mystery to most people, <laughs> uh, but I can say that the village of Tinley Park will not be asking for any more money than they've asked for the last two years. We've had this freeze in effect for, this is I believe our third year, mm. and um, you know it, it's our opportunity and our way to try to keep the cost prop of property taxes down to mm. as, um, is le less a burden as possible, and, and we know that's not easy. Um, I can speak for my own taxes, for <laughs> instance. It's about 11 percent that's the village of Tinley Park, mm -hmm. and 76 percent that are schools mm -hmm. and education, and and the rest county and other taxing bodies. So um, everybody needs their sources, and because we have a diverse revenue stream between sales taxes and income taxes that the schools don't, mm -hmm. it's it's an opportunity for us to to give hopefully the taxpayers a little bit of a breather. Wow. Now some, there's been talk where some towns give, send a check back every year in the mail for uh, a rebate. Uh, does Tinley do that or, and why don't we do that? I understand you abate taxes before you have to send anything out, right? What we try to do is rather than collect taxes and then give it back, is we try to abate taxes. We abated in December near $6 million in taxes. And when you look at a, your property tax is built on about a $25 million abatement. So without that abatement, it would have been over $31 million. So these abatements are, are basically revenue streams that are identified from other sources so that we can essentially pay bonds, pay certain long-term debt, capital project debt, from revenue streams that aren't the taxpayer's responsibility uh, mm -hmm. through the, the property taxes. So it's, it shelters you to some degree from, the, from that burden. So wow. we, we've tried to been, be diligent about identifying other revenue streams to use to pay those long-term obligations. And we only mm -hmm. go to debt for long-term projects. We don't go to debt mm -hmm. as some communities have to, to, to pay payroll. We only oh go to debt to build a buildings long-term assets, infrastructure, the types of things that you and your children will be able to use in the, lo in the long run. So Tinley Park, uh, it's, it's pay as you go. If we, you have it, you spend it. If you don't have it, you don't spend it. Huh? Absolutely. Wow. Be nice if other governments <laughs> operated that way. We're trying, we're trying to be a model, Ron. Yeah. We're trying to be a model. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, I understand Tinley is kind of a model for, uh, for some communities. On well, we're a double A plus bond rated community, which is uh, exceptional. Mm -hmm. And I think that it uh, just shows the uh, fiscal conservatism that we've practiced here for certainly as long as I've been on the board and um, many of the other board members, the mayor, and other predecessors to me have, uh, have been conservatives when it comes mm -hmm. to finances, and I think that that shows in, in that kind of a bond rating. Wow. Well, keep it going on that. <laughs> we'll try. We'll try. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, the state and certain yeah. of our sister governments aren't uh, yeah, How is that affecting Tinley Park, the way the state's going? Well, there's no doubt that the delays in certain revenue streams are challenges, but we're fortunate in that we are not 
cash flow bound as certain other communities are. We've mm -hmm. got reserves to get us through these rainy days, just as we had reserves to get us through the recession, um, you know, without doing layoffs. Uh, we mm -hmm. managed that fairly well. Um, I think right now we're managing this because we're hoping that it's short term, but uh, the, the challenges before the state, of course, are, are major, and um, as long as they don't pass them down to us in the way <laughs> of an you. unfunded <laughs> mandate, yeah. we'll be okay. But unfortunately, um, there are a lot of bills out there that are going to have to be paid, and um, some way, somehow, some shape, some form, I'm afraid that, mm -hmm. uh, that we may get tagged with some of that. Oh, boy. How's our police and fire department doing? Doing great. Doing great. We just promoted seven firefighters to engineers yesterday. They were recognized at the village board meeting okay. and it was uh, it was good to see the young men and women. We okay. have a, a woman that was uh, part of the group, um, you know, get a chance to participate in, in our paid on-call fire force. I still think we have one of the f best fire departments around and it's certainly the best bargain around in terms mm -hmm. of government services. And uh, we're real proud of the men and women that, that do that and continue to serve in, in that part-time capacity. They, wow. they, they do a great job, and mm -hmm. I think we have great fire protection here in town, great fire suppression, and good fire prevention as well. Good. Yeah, keep it going. How about the new ambulance service? How's that working out? Tinley Bark just got a new ambulance service this last year. How's that working out? So far, so good. Okay. Uh, there was a break in period, <laughs> as there are with, with any new group, but they uh, they seem to do it. And actually, in a short time, they'll be presenting the village an $86,000 check. One of the provisions oh. in the agreement with them was to actually have, if certain benchmark uh, revenues were achieved, that there would actually be a, a rebate to the village. And we'll be getting that shortly. Oh, I'd my. Hopefully not a big check. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At a board meeting. <laughs> okay. That'd be good. Wow. So we're getting money back from the ambulance service there, huh? Well, it's, um, in a way, I when we first instituted this service long, long ago, uh, part of my feeling was it ought to be like a franchise fee, and maybe they ought to pay us for the privilege of a monopoly. Okay. It hasn't quite worked out that uh -huh. way because the village's responsibility there, and the reason why the village contracts with ambulance service is really for response times. We, we really need our citizens to have those services basically as soon as possible. And this is one way to achieve that and to guarantee that because right now they share the, the garage and our fire stations. Mm -hmm. So they're local and they're dedicated ambulances. And so far, so good. I, I think we're pretty pleased with the service thus far. Oh, good, good. Sounds good. All right. How about uh, Public Works? Uh, public Works has been in the news a little bit. What's going on in the Public Works department well, now? We've had an interim director of Public Works, Bill Balling. He's been with us for several months right now, and it's given him an opportunity to really dig in and take a look at what's going on there. Um, some of the challenges we've had with water meters have been clarified, I think, as time has gone on. The consultants that were brought in to take a look at the situation uh, validated one thing, which was that the change from mechanical meters to smart meters was the right thing to do. That, that part is, uh, is proven. The variation is far less than with the old mechanical meters. And it's, um, as you can see from your electrical utilities and others, everybody's going to smart meter yeah. technology. It's the right thing to do. The wrong things to do, we managed to, <laughs> to, to do as well. The uh, vendor that was selected to provide the smart meters uh, unfortunately uh, didn't monitor them well enough or advise us to monitor them closely enough mm -hmm. and um, and we didn't and I think that's where some of these problems arose at a, at a greater rate of frequency than one would have expected. Meters wear out, meters break, doesn't matter what kind they are, That that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, in this instance, you had relatively new technology that was rolled out and really needed to be closely monitored and closely managed. And unfortunately, I think we were in more of a reaction than a proaction mode on this one. So, it's uh, we're getting there. Okay. We've got a we've got some plans in place right now based on the the counsel that we've received thus far. Uh, we'll not only be uh, putting in place a plan to, to replace all of those meters, oh. but we'll also be putting in a place, uh, putting in a plan to basically um, 
manage refunds and reimbursements to citizens oh that once the new meters are in and we can see the variations before and after we'll have a basis as well as with some statistical sampling that uh, we're retaining a forensic accounting firm actually to work with us to identify those standards so that there's mm -hmm. not an arbitrary uh, fashion about determining whether somebody's got a problem or not, but gives us a chance to be proactive. And we've done that in the past, Ron. The public mm -hmm. Works has been good at, you know, when they've seen uh, abnormalities in bills, they, they've contacted residents and let them know. But it's not been in as organized and as structured a fashion as I think is needed. And um, that that's going to be part of the, the changes that you see coming shortly. Wow. What's going to determine who gets the new meters uh, that have been determined yet? Or? Uh, that's part of what the forensic accounting firm is going to be doing. They'll mm -hmm. be taking a look at where the um, problems have been, and those have tended to be in certain lots. So the lots will be identified that have been the most problematic, and they would be first in line to be replaced. Mm -hmm. And then the less problematic units would come in in the latter part of this project. Well, it sounds like the village is kind of getting ahead of the problem. You know, the problem came up, and what are you going to do? Well, you're getting ahead of it and staying on top of it, it sounds like. Well, we're trying to be as uh, proactive as we yeah. can. Uh, it, it's a shame that it happened this way, right, but right. Uh, with all new technologies, there's an element <laughs> of risk, and uh, for better or worse, we um, experience some of that. And mm -hmm. we're just trying to make it right by our residents. Well, that's good. Well, Tinley Park's got a good reputation for doing well and doing everything. You, you get a glitch once in a while, but uh, for the most part, I think we're doing okay, seems like. <laughs> trying our best. <laughs> trying our best. How about roads and uh, the, the winter time? We all set for winter time uh, salt and all, all set. Of Plenty of salt. <laughs> oh, I, I think I think we're set. Um, hopefully, this winter will not be as uh, as bad as it could be. And even Ooh. though they're predict predicting higher temperatures, sometimes that means ice, and there's Ooh. nothing that could be worse than ice. So uh, hopefully that doesn't materialize, but uh, we're watching it closely and our crews are ready to get on the road and okay. do their thing. Let's hope they don't need to. Has <laughs> uh, the village gotten any more honors or awards uh, at all? Or? Well, we became aware of an award where there was 150 of the best Illinois communities, 150 of the worst communities <laughs> identified. <laughs> so that's a distinction that you maybe want to be careful with. Yeah. but. As I read through it, because you you don't get these because you apply for them, right. you get yeah. them because somebody uses a series of statistics and uh, says this is where you rank and prints it. So you don't even have a chance to say, well, wait, maybe <laughs> there, maybe you missed something here. Um, but actually, Tinley Park in uh, placed in one of the top 150 communities, and actually we were number 41 of the 150. And we were the top of the south suburban, southwest suburban area. Really? So we were really nice. It was, it was flattering to see that because I think they recognize the schools, the parks, mm. all of the things that make Tinley Park a great place to live. It's certainly, you know, more than just fire prevention, fire department, police and public works. But it's people like yourself that okay. volunteer and <laughs> okay. work with us that, um, that make make Tinley Park what it is, and, and it shows in those kinds of reports. Wow. Well, what, what, do you, what do you project for Tinley? What would you like to see, now that you're mayor, what would you like to see Tinley Park accomplish in, in your tenure or in the coming years? Or what, what's your vision for the future of Tinley Park? Well, I think that balancing our tax revenue portfolio is probably one of the most important things that we have to do. And we try to do that with the home rule sales tax, be a little bit less dependent on property taxes, be less dependent on the state sending their um, fuel taxes to us. Um, roads are a challenge in, in every community, and we work hard to try to keep them in as good a shape as possible. And uh, the money that was coming out of the motor fuel tax was simply insufficient. Ooh. So we had to, um, we, we supplemented that with that uh, home rule sales tax. That, so that's, that's helpful. But there's no substitute for growth. Growth covers up a lot of warts, <laughs> but it also gives you some opportunities. Mm -hmm. And um, we're really looking forward to some additional retail coming in town. Mm. We're fortunate enough to have the Power Center on 191st in Harlem, which is one of the mm. six, over 600,000 square feet of retail are there. Wow. And uh, that can be a magnet. It's actually mm -hmm. a magnet for the hotels, which surprised me Ooh. when one of our uh, 
hotel operators basically told us that that is a big attraction, that people really? actually come in, spend a night, and do their shopping there. Oh, my. <laughs> so, you know, it's a... It, it's always good to hear that. <laughs> yeah. We love to see, see people spend money in Tinley Park. Yeah. So, um, so that that was that was pretty optimistic. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. that once again we're working on some other opportunities to do some more retail. So that oh. that should be very good. As you know, we've got a very strong retail base with mm -hmm. our auto dealerships oh, yeah, on yeah, 159th yeah. Street, and this is yet another way to balance that sales tax portfolio as well. So wow. that's what we're, um, I think that's coming soon. Obviously, the development of the mental health center is mm -hmm. critical. That probably won't happen during my career <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> in public life, but uh, yeah. hopefully we get a chance to at least see a good plan put in place and start to see some development there. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the mental health center and the uh, the opportunities in that area, as you know, we just uh, initiated at the end of November, the 30th, was the first express train on Metra oh. from the city to Tinley Park, 33 minutes. Oh, my goodness, really? Um, we talked to How the How did you get that? <laughs> well, this has been pushed for a while. It's probably okay. two years in the, in the making that we've had conversations with Metra about what we thought was the need and how important it really is to, to Tinley Park and to a suburb to have a, an express train. Mm -hmm. And um, they initiated it with a uh, grant, a pilot grant that they had received on weekends and did express trains. It was successful on weekends and they've made them permanent now. Oh. And so fast forward till now, uh, now we've got the express train 33 minutes. The The executive director Don Orsino was telling me that the those trains move 79 to 80 miles an hour wow. on the track. So it's really quite a Wow, <laughs> uh, an accomplishment, and uh, we're we're pleased to have our citizens be able to get home a little more quickly. That's good. They're starting it out at 80th Avenue. We we uh, I was sure to prod them a little bit to say, well, maybe you can get one at Oak Park Avenue okay. too, because <laughs> um, it, it, certainly as we develop uh, downtown Tinley, those will, that'll be important to people that commute as well. So. We're trying, we're working it, and hopefully we're successful. Ooh. Now, what's that? What's the schedule now? Is there one train a day that comes? That it's the 4:57 that's in by okay. 5:30. Okay. So that's wow. uh, nine cat cars, nine railroad cars wow. were on that locomotive. Wow. So that's a lot I know. Whenever I say that train coming through, I I can't believe all the cars that are on the train, all the people that are on that train yeah. when it comes down here. Geez. For that's the a, first trip the train was almost full. Oh my. <laughs> so uh, they were pretty pleased and I think uh, it yeah. kept the conductors <laughs> hustling because they had a lot of real estate to cover in a, in a relatively short time. Good. Well, congratulations on well, getting the service at thanks, Tilly Park. Ron. That's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, that that helps market us as well. Oh, and yeah. Clearly that's one of the things we need to do is market the village. And so that okay. that's one of those elements that we think will be helpful. Okay. Well, uh, basically, uh, you, uh, you're tenured in uh, Tinley Park. How long have you lived in Tinley? Since 1976, 39 okay. years. And you got a family here? Uh, who's your... Families in the city. Family got older, of course, went okay. two of the three went to Marion. Okay, okay. And, and one went to Tinley Park High School, and uh, they all made it through college, fortunately. Wow. And so now they've, as that rite of passage seems to be, they're all living in the city. So, oh, okay. So, uh, but they're out a lot, and uh, we're always happy to see them now that we've got uh, two grandchildren, and oh, one wow. just came October 13th, so we're very fortunate. Well, thanks for coming to Discover, Tinley. Thanks Thank for giving you, us the update, and uh, let's hope that uh, Tinley Park keeps on going the way it's been going, and, uh, and with your able leadership and the, the board, we keep on progressing. Well, we'll do our best. Thank right. you, Ron. Appreciate your support and help. Well, Mayor Dave Seaman, uh, Mayor of Tinley Park, uh, hopefully uh, things are on the right track, and we're going to go right ahead. Thanks for watching Discover Tinley. We'll see you next month.